There's also an uh, element that we haven't really discussed here. Uh, I see a lot of people talk about it on the Wall Street Best Forum and Reddit. It's, it seems to be a coordinated media effort to say that the you know that this game is over, right? Game mm -hmm. is done. They they want to say that AMC is done and that all the investors are now pivoting towards uh, silver funds. Uh, it does look a little conspicuous. I was afraid to put on my tinfoil hat at first uh, when I saw some of those forms, but it does look real conspicuous that, that it seems like they were calling that, they called the shot before even went in, right? Uh, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like, hey, everybody's putting money in, like they, they in that take, yeah. they became the, the, the form themselves. Everybody's putting their money in silver, <laughs> like, Where'd you get that from? Yeah. I, like I said, I'm out there. We're, we're, we're looking, we're monitoring the Wall Street Bets form. It's wide open. Everybody can see it. Nobody's saying that inside Wall Street Bets. Yeah, I haven't exactly. seen that in any group that I'm a part of. I haven't seen that in any chats. Nothing. I don't even know where they got that from. It looks like the, clearly they're trying to get people, again, because you can sell, but you can't buy. They're trying to get people to get their money out and move it someplace else. Yeah, and it's... It seems a little fishy. Um, seems like it's designed uh, FUD to be put out there to get people scared away from now investing new money into it. Uh, but, you know, uh, it worked today. I'll say it worked today. Will it work tomorrow? I don't know. I think uh, people are getting wise. There's some uh, fake accounts being exposed on Wall Street bets. And remember what I said that um, over this weekend that these hedge funds and wall street big money they're going to be working 24 7 around the clock to figure out a way to end this uh movement you know because they 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 have they they i wouldn't be i i wouldn't be surprised if they have spent millions uh at this point trying to figure out ways how to end this whether it's paying companies to to run how these do negative you battle somebody that has an unlimited bank they yeah. can lose billions and they'll borrow more. Exactly. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, we're going, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not this is going to, um, uh, how, how, how much of this media FUD is going to actually work and how much can it take away. It, you know, it, once it gets exposed to saying that, hey, this isn't Wall Street bets, this isn't us, we're not saying jump into these silver funds. But mind you, I think silver funds are actually a good thing to invest in and long. I actually bought some this morning, and they're both yeah. Up, so, uh, yeah. Um, because, but the reason I say it's good is not because of some epic short squeeze where if we mm -hmm. silver that actually exists, and you know, uh, you know, it's going to cause a squeeze because they have to, uh, you know, you know, the, the the funds didn't have to buy it, and there's no there's no more silver that actually exists, uh, so they have to keep raising the price of the silver that does exist, and it makes an epic uh, squeeze there. Um, that's not the reason why. The reason why I'm buying. It's because silver is used in uh, uh, you know, the manufacturing of uh, vehicles, especially uh, electric vehicles, and that's projected to rise significantly over the next decade. Um, so just off of that alone, uh, and just silver to me is also a finite resource. You have to mine it. You have to, you know, constantly mm -hmm. for where it's at. I th think the price of silver will, you know, continue to rise off of that, not because of what, uh, uh, you know, this epic squeeze people are talking about. Um, but... That being said, uh, you know, I don't think, you know, you should take your GameStop or your AMC out of that and put it into silver. And here's why. Um, you're going to have too much money and too many different pots. You're going to have, you know, people on Wall Street that were already upset about, kind of upset the OG ones, you could say, or a little bit upset, upset about AMC. Um, but, you know, they, they eventually kind of stopped complaining about putting money in AMC. Now, we're talking about putting money in silver funds. If that if that happens, right, then you have money being spread out too thin, and you can't uh, significantly move the price in any uh, 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 securities. So what you need to do really is, uh, I would say, if 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 I put on my tinfoil hat and say if someone could, you know, get everybody to take all their investments, even if you're investing at a loss, and put into one stock, you'll see this uh, train take off again, right? Um, if everybody says, hey, you know, if you're in GME, pump it all in AMC. If you're in AMC, pump it all in GME. 
everybody pump, get out of bed, bath, and yarn, get out of uh, naked, get out of all these things, whether you're up or down or sideways, whatever, get out and pump into one thing, then that would dramatically blow, uh, blow a lid off this thing. Um, but can people unite under, you know, one common cause, especially if you got money in another stock, and especially if you're down, you're hoping that, you know, man, I'm really hoping that you turn things around. Or maybe you're up and you see a lot of upside still left, and it's like, I don't want to pull it out now. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be hard. But if you can get that to happen, then I think that's a way uh, to really, uh, let's say, put some rocket fuel in this ship and, and really take it off. Um, I wanted to pivot real quick here. Yesterday we mentioned – the two SPACs, the two special acquisition mm -hmm. companies. Um, and let's take a look at what they did today. Let's take a look at CCIV. Um, let's see here. One day. Uh, aftermarket, it's definitely taken a huge jump. So it opened at 2350, closed at 2544. So we definitely saw a rise over the day. But in the aftermarket, it jumped to as high as twenty eight forty seven, and looks like it's sitting around twenty eight dollars. Again, that's aftermarket. It actually, actually opened somewhere or closed somewhere. Um, I'm always weary about. That's a whole separate topic there, like how aftermarket and before hours excitement, you know, will move you. I've seen, I've seen, you know, before market, pre market stuff shows something so high. And I'm like, yeah, all right, yeah, cool. You know, you think you're going to buy this rocket ship or what have you? That sucker drops instantly the moment it opens, and then maybe it recovers, but uh, you end up buying in the wrong spot. Um, the other mm -hmm. one, Switchback. For some reason, I want to call that Starbase. No, that's, that's one. But um, it actually opened high, took a steep drop. Um, yeah. I have to double check. I bought somewhere up in here shortly after it opened, too. But closed higher. So we opened at 38.28. And finish at 38.54, not a ton of movement, but take uh, it's a slow-moving train here after market. It's going to be interesting. Again, those, uh, as we discussed yesterday, those mergers can definitely still fall through, uh, especially the CCIV, yeah. I believe, is being sued, and, you know, they're being challenged. But, um, that's not CCIV, that's uh, ACTC. ACTC, my goodness, yep. Uh, the only big up, good, bad admission. We're not professionals. Um yeah. But yeah. So in the I, I, up, let's take a look at that one too. And ACTC is up a little bit as well. Um, so overall, ten percent right, today. Right. Yep. Uh, so people are still bullish on that. I think, like I said, man, EV is the future. Um, for me, at least, I know I had, I had so uh, switched back. Uh, at 40 with the intention to get back in when the price, because uh, I saw the price going down. Um, so I got back in at 37, you know, about 100 shares, made a quick 147 bucks a day. Uh, it's still part of my long term hope. I'm probably not going to sell again. Um, similar, once these take off, uh, SBE, ACTC, and Nick, they're up now, but wait till everything is finalized. Um, same thing for CCIV. Mm -hmm. CCIV has to actually officially be announced. CCIV is more of a risk in all of them because oh, yeah. CCIV, uh, Churchill Capital has not, neither Churchill Capital or Lucid Motors has not officially uh, yeah, we're come out and said. Rumor that, level here, you know. Yes, yeah, it's, all, it's all rumors. So, not, neither of them have been even confirmed or denied that this this back, uh, this reverse acquisition is going to happen. In, in fact, somebody things, asked that question Is the Red yeah. Riley lifting shares ahead of the uh, SPAC merger? <laughs> I, I think, uh, you know, I, People are excited about this. People want to be invested in Lucid. Uh, people want to get you know as much as they can uh, into these EV uh, spas because they know they're going to pop. They know as soon as this thing gets announced, you can see this thing quickly double. I mean, quickly double. Mm -hmm. But like I said, if it doesn't go through, I expect it to fall back back down to about ten dollars a share. Um, Lucid's all mm -hmm. the things they announced. Uh, they, they they're almost complete on a uh, Arizona plant uh, for pumping out their vehicles. And they're also in talks with Saudi Arabia, I believe, uh, to open up doing manufacturing over there with a big money deal in the works. So Lucid is making, trying to make some waves happen. Um, you know, I might, uh, I have 100 shares of CCIV uh, in my Robin Hood, you know, Robin Hood portfolio that I'm moving over to, to, to uh, uh, Fidelity, but also 
I have over in Fidelity. I have a couple of IRAs that I have uh, about another 250 shares of CCIV. So you can tell that I'm big in the stock. And I'm actually, hopefully, I want to purchase more. Um, I'm going to see if it pulls back a little bit. But that's because I'm really bullish. I'm, I'm willing to take that risk um, because if this, like I said, it, it will pop. You know, you're going to see a big initial run up um, in CCIV once, uh, I should say, if uh, the, the act reserve. Uh, reverse acquisition is announced. So it's, it's, it's a potential play with a lot of gain or a lot of loss. Um, some people fresh off the heels of this uh, uh, ANC uh, GameStop rally might, you know, say, I just want something easy and slow, and it might not be for you. But maybe you ride high off the light, and you want to take another risk. This is a good one to get into. Uh, once again, not a financial Those are long plays. I'm, so, yeah, but I'm long telling long. you what I'm doing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, As I'm, unprofessionals, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, just a, just a guy trying to make a buck, but that's what I'm trying to get into. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think I think it will pay off. I would say you read the tea leaves, you have a cross leadership, you have a board member that is on CCIV who's also uh, uh, Should an be executive the Secretary at, of Energy. No, 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 no. I'm talking about CCIV. So uh, the board member at CCIV is also an executive at uh, Lucid. So um, that's that. That's a very strong connection. You can't deny. I <laughs> mean, you really can't yeah. deny that. Um, so and then for, for ACT, uh, ACTC, like you said. Uh, uh, yeah, there was ACTC go, arc like going public with Proterra. And on the yeah. Pro- Proterra board of directors is the former governor of Michigan and uh, – the future Secretary of Energy, who Biden has already named, awaiting confirmation. So, powerful connection there. So, Very these are powerful. long plays for uh, at not yet public electric vehicle companies. Um, yeah. They each have their own positive upside for the long term. So, we're not professionals, but that's where my money is. You said so you're going money, that's what we're doing. So, yeah, so this is, these are, you know, some of the plays down and I, I I usually don't give out uh things that I'm not personally interested in. Mm-hmm. I just feel like it's a little disingenuous. You may talk about it a little Absolutely. bit. But I won't tell you I won't be bullish about something that I'm not in because I'm in it only because I'm bullish about it. Um but I want to talk about something um that I was in and I was trying to get back in and I just this AMC grid actually took me away from doing it. Took up the funds I was gonna put into it. Um uh but so now I'm kind of really uh, but uh, space, SPCE, uh, Surge of Galactic Focus, um, that has taken off today. It's up 21% on the day and another 8% on uh, after market hours, so roughly 30% for the whole day. Uh, so it's at 58.24. And, uh, you know, I wish I had held on. I, I, the reason I want, I'll talk about this one is because I got into this one. Uh, way early. I got into this one uh, around like 20 bucks. Um, I sold a put on it. Uh, sorry, I sold a call on it. Uh, I think I sold a call around uh, uh, I forgot what I sold it on. But anyway, it got exercised. I said I was going to get back in there later. They never did. And I am kicking myself because I had 100 shares of it. So, um, yeah, it, it really took off today. Um, um, they had some good news. They announced that uh, they were going to do a test flight coming up next month, and a lot that test flight actually was supposed to happen a little while back, and it got delayed, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, but they're going to uh, proceed with the test flight uh, next month, and depending on how that goes, I mean, if that's a successful test flight, and some of that, some of this gains is built into that that news. Um, but if it's a successful test flight, that really opens up the door for them moving forward with commercial space travel. Um, uh, for those who don't know, uh, Virgin Galactic is into uh, making uh, space flights for space tourism. Um, so they'll be really one of the first players in the market to do that, um, to have a, a actual business of space tourism. And that, I think there is a market for that. Um, I think you're going to have people who want to build a space 
I mean, who, who doesn't who doesn't really want to say, hey, man, I've been to space. I mean, that's a unique experience that only a handful of people on this planet can say that they really rich people. Of black oh. to yeah, <laughs> starting off is going to be quite well, wealthy people. Those hedge funders, uh, we're trying yeah. to make it to the moon on stock. The hedge funders might literally be on a rocket ship to the moon. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, um, I think if I remember it correctly, I think it's a few million dollars. Uh, a ticket. So, um, look this way. I don't think uh, me or you are going anytime soon. They they might try uh, charge us double for the weight. So, <laughs> uh, I'll safely here from Earth until they uh, uh, bolster up. Uh, you know, yeah, make it cheaper and bolster up the amount of people they could take up. But I mean, that's that's appealing, and this is just the first step. And that's why people like it because mm-hmm. it is is the first step into really commercializing space as far as commercial space travel. Um, you see SpaceX doing the same thing, but they have other things you're looking into mining hydrogen and uh, uh, leasing out, essentially uh, leasing out their, their rockets to have other people put their satellites and other vehicles in space. Uh, so, but, you know, Virgin Galactic, they have a different model and they're trying to commercialize space travel. Um, I think if SpaceX, I'll say when it goes public, I don't think, I don't know if it's happening anytime soon, but I have a feeling it'll go public at some point. Uh, expect that to be big. Uh, Huge. He's going to make Captain Elon Musk the richest man in the world. By a lot. He's already by, is, but it's going to be a lot margin. Yeah, yeah. So, like, and, and it's funny how things are. You know, people sitting there like, oh my gosh, Jeff Bezos is at a 184 bit, like, and you think that's unpassable, and then you look at what Tesla's done, and, and like I said, this man has more to do. Um, let's see if that's uh, been updated. What are these numbers? Uh, real-time, Forbes real-time billionaire list. Because, uh, let's see, yep, it's still Elon, who's since 5 p.m. Eastern, the prior trader day, day, I don't know if that's counts for today or not, but... Another nine billion for Elon Musk. Another seven billion for Jeff Bezos as they just battle it out for richest people in the world. But once he goes public um, with that SpaceX, man. Yeah, I mean, and just quick clarification: the flight window for the VSS Unity uh, for uh, Virgin Galactic will open on February thirteenth, and uh, they'll have. Uh, 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 pretty much almost the rest of the month to uh, test that, uh, barring, you know, weather or any other relating factors that would stop it. But uh, they say they are technical readiness, which means they are looking to send this bird in the sky. So let's say they test it on February 13th. After February 13th, uh, and it's successful, you see another run up in the stock. I-, I like it for the long term, guys. Um, I really think uh, this stock. And, you know, maybe by the even by the end of the year. Um, but, you know, it's definitely a $100 stock long term, way more than that. If they can continue to develop this technology, um, it, it, you know, it can have it can have broader applications outside of just uh, commercial space travel uh, for tourism. Uh, they could uh, take these uh, vehicles that they're working on and, you know, they could uh uh, have military contracts or other, uh, like say, contracts with NASA and other, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, country rela- uh, country specific uh, uh, aer- aeronautical uh, contracts with other countries. This could really be a, a big play. So uh, something to keep an eye on. Um, like I said, I sold most of my. I do have a little bit in one of my uh, IRAs, but I sold a big position, uh, which I had now. But hindsight is twenty twenty. But I will be looking to get back in. I might try to get back in with a, you know, a cash covered put, sell a put to get in, uh, to get in at a more desirable price than it is right now. So it's run up off that news. I expect it to retreat a little bit, hopefully. Um, it may not, but uh, I'll look for an entry point to get in to uh, Virgin Galactic Holdings with a ticker symbol SPCE. Mm-hmm. Anything? Is there any other uh, stocks, Troy, that you've been eyeing that's been making some moves today? Um. Uh, in full disclosure, for the SBCE, I I have not um, purchased any. Its parent company was barred to me because they used to be an airline. You know, I work in aviation. Um, how sad is that? I'm bar- I have a massive list of defense contractors and aircraft manufacturers and airlines that I cannot invest in. 
And so when anything's kind of iffy, I literally have to, would have to run it by the uh, ethics office. Um, and I have yet to ask them about that. So I just didn't even bother as we approach our financial disclosures for the year. Um, Sundial. Sundial Growers was a big one for me. Let's pull that up. And that had um, a little bit of chatter in social media and what have you. And that's what I like to see. I bought 1,000 shares of Sundial, around 85 cents, so it's up to uh, $1.21, peaked after market, and just kind of cruising all along. I just want to see that above a dollar. Uh, today alone, that pulled in 365 bucks for me. Um, I, I made some other purchases. We talked yesterday about the pullback allowing for purchase opportunities, um, one of them being in the big companies. So we have Apple stock. It's funny when you go to type something in and I try to type a symbol and I end up spelling out the whole darn thing, but they know what I'm talking about. So uh, Apple opened and I managed to get in there at a nice little dip. I actually bought down here in this uh, dip, but just riding along for the ride for Apple. Same thing for Tesla. Tesla opened low, dipped hard. It's f I find it funny when you see a lot of these patterns, you see all that bite out of Apple. Look at that buy out of Tesla, exact same thing. Open around 814. I had that actually at 814 right there to open. Um, it jumped up, fell right back down. I wish could have gotten this level if we all knew how to time to market perfectly. But looking at Tesla, marching raw back on, you know how I feel about Tesla, so I managed to purchase some more shares there. Um, that pullback at the end of last week, as we said, allowed for a... Um, allow for an opening for some people to purchase uh just especially if they purchase their if they sold their game since you can't buy no damn GameStop and you can't buy no damn amc you know you can get into some regular stock and i don't recommend everybody having such high volatile stocks get you some giants some blue chips as they call them um we talked about evs we um i mentioned it yesterday as well general motors um look at this exact same dip that almost everybody took yeah. today man like that's just Tells you how the market moves together. Lit, truly. But um, I've been on General Motors for a while. I bought General Motors back in the $30 range. Um, so it, it has definitely returned well for me. And for now, it's because of their future. You know, they're working on the electric Hummer and what have you. I will now definitively hold on uh, to GM for the long term if they made the announcement. They're, they're going to be moving to an all-electric <laughs> fleet in about 15 years. So they definitely have their eyes on the future. They understand that we will see, as we said yesterday, we're going to see the end of the internal combustion engine in our lifetimes and electric vehicles yeah. in the future. So that's why we're investing in the SPAC companies that are looking to bring electric vehicle manufacturers uh, on so they can go public. And I'm going to be holding on GM along with my others, Workhorse, um, Neo. I think Neo actually closed down for the day. Yeah, Neil was down a little bit. It sounded like a, a, a point. Yeah, more. they took a little retreat there. Not, not a horrific one or anything. It wasn't a massacre. We're still yeah. ahead of earnings, though. Um, and here's the thing about Neil. They delivered, once again, they yeah. had delivery numbers. And uh, they were very March, impressive. January delivery surged 352%. And we're still waiting for earnings on Neo. Um, yeah. Let's see here. When, in, when are earnings? Earnings for Neo. Uh, that would be a, that'll end up being uh, surely the topic of one of our future uh, streams. Yeah, I want to uh, say it's, it's, it's not until March seventeenth. So. Okay, so we got plenty of time. All right, but yeah, but here's the thing about Neo. They they found a lot of good news. Um, the price targets are constantly being raised between seventy and eighty bucks. Um, right now, I don't know why people are uh, skittish on it. Um, but they're going to miss out because Neil's going to run. He's going to run. Oh, yeah. I think uh, definitely um, coming into Q2 of this year, uh, Neil's going to surge. Um, oh, yeah. You can't, you know, to me, they're growing their business. Um, hey, I bought some more Neil shares today. Uh, that's it. it's, it's on sale. Um, they're, yeah. growing their, they're growing their business. They're doing all the right things. Um, you know, they're, they're using the capital they raised to further uh, increase their uh, production capacity. Uh, production capacity it's going to be uh it's going to be you know a, a powerhouse and here's the thing neil is trying to expand outside of china uh I believe the netherlands was their first target 
Um, they open up even job uh, job openings and job posts uh, for the Netherlands. That's how people were, were first got wind of it. Um, Netherlands, I believe, is one of the more friendly uh, friendlier places to sell an EV. Um, so it makes sense for that to, for uh, for the Netherlands to be a natural uh, starting point for them as they work on expanding outside of the Chinese market. They already said that they really want to capitalize on uh, the European market. Uh, it would be a hard sell. Um, for uh, Neo to get over to the States, um, just mm -hmm. the tension between uh, Beijing and... Uh, Especially uh, with um, yeah, yeah, one DC. thing, you know Trump uh, led a semi-assault on, uh, they were trying, he was trying to get Chinese stocks delisted, and Neo, I believe, was a target of one of those, but... Biden has uh, hasn't gotten that far, but he's doubled down on his buy American, and he's looking for American EV manufacturers. So it's going to be yeah. quite difficult, um, and especially with the popularity of Tesla as they continue to rise. They're re releasing a new Model S, is it a redesigned one? Um, but I so, think it's the flag they're putting out there. Um, it's it's going to be a problem for them to get a foothold in there. But for Neo, getting a foothold in the Netherlands, getting a foot, if I'm not mistaken. Again, we are pros, but getting a foothold in the that's still an EU member country that should give them a foothold in the entire European Union. So that'll be an interesting thing for Neo. Yeah, I think Neo's going to make it a big expansion into uh, the, the, uh, all of Europe. I imagine China. Uh, if you look at the world stage, China has a lot of influence in Africa. So uh, Neo's more of a premium brand, but I could say maybe Lee or Exxon. Um, making a chance, pushing a play to push uh, some EVs into, into Africa um, as they continue to build up that Chinese base there, actually. So this place is, and they're also doing the same thing in South America. So this place is, it could go. Um, maybe not Neo specifically, but just China EVs. Um, there's a reason you don't see any Chinese cars in America. Um, it's not because China doesn't make cars. They don't, it's not because they don't make vehicles. It's because... Uh, uh, there's a uh, tax, uh, it's done specifically by America. They put a import tax on Chinese cars that uh, I believe is almost 30%. So they would have to mark up the price of the car 30% just to sell it to you. And that doesn't make, nobody's gonna pay that extra markup just as a, just a Chinese vehicle. Um, it doesn't Especially make when they're getting credits for everything else. Uh... Yeah, you know, whether you're buying Tesla or any other, uh, I mean, that's just for any any car, any car, you know, yeah. uh, any any Chinese car. So um, it doesn't make financial sense for them to try to sell vehicles here uh, under the current climate. Maybe that'll change in the future. Um, you know, hopefully, I think it's a good thing to just between two countries or to ratchet down a little bit. Uh, but for right now, mm -hmm. immediate and probably the near term future, I don't see uh, Neil making his way to the states. Uh, maybe Canada. Canada might be able to do it, uh, you know, and I'd uh, say some of the South American countries. But it's still, Neo has, I mean, China is a huge market, huge market. I mean, it's, you know, billions of people there. Um, it, they're not going to have a problem making money, they're gonna have a problem uh, expanding. Uh, it's, 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 you know, that Asian market is huge. So uh, I'm still very bullish on Neo. Hundreds of shares in and looking to add more. Um, hoping in the next four to five years, this will be a four to five hundred dollars stock. Uh, maybe it's fair to say we're both bullish across the board on. <laughs> we're both bullish across the board on all EV stocks. Speaking of, Workhorse definitely made a run today. Um, yeah. Opening at thirty-five, uh, let's call it thirty-six. Uh, peaked at forty, and still closed above at around thirty-nine dollars. So. Um, yeah, yeah. Work, workhorse, Lordstown, probably look at Lordstown Motors, it's probably made a similar run today. Um, they're, those, they're, they're benefiting off of uh, Biden's announcement. Lordstown Motors is right, I have to look it up, that's a ridiculous uh, They're only up 1.27% uh, today. But, uh, that's funny, I can't believe Rye wasn't taken before they... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, but uh, over the month, they're up 33%. So shows you that uh, you know these EVs under a favorable uh, Democratic administration. I mean, Democratic administration, and with uh, Democratic control of both the House and Senate via tiebreaker, uh, people are looking at EVs as quite favorable. Um, and EVs make sense. I mean, at the end of the day, they do make a lot of sense. Um, 
you, you know, it's easier, uh, it's safer, um, you know, you can, uh, it's better for the environment. It's a lot of win, 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 wins. And unless you love the sound of the ICE, um, that, that, that just really gets your gears going and you like hearing that, you like, you know, you like the idea of shifting gears and stuff like that. But I mean, it really doesn't make much sense. EVs are more energy efficient, uh, fuel, uh, fuel efficient, uh, versus, you know, the, the amount of, uh, Energy you get with a charge versus that of gas is is more efficient. Less moving parts means goes uh, means less maintenance. Uh, better for the environment. Better on your pocket in the long term. It, it just makes a lot of sense, right? It makes you know we it, it reduces the amount of oil we have to be dependent on. So we don't want going to be as much of an oil dependent nation as you were before. Uh, it, it makes a ton of sense. Um, uh, you know, I think it's the way of the future. You think. People should embrace honestly embrace it more. EV solar too. I mean, if you think about it, if they can further continue to improve solar technology, um, uh, you know that that will actually go a long way, in making a whole ecosystem where your house, you know, uh, Tesla has these solar. Uh, they have solar panels, of course, but they have something called a solar roof, which are individual shingles, and each of these shingles is like a, almost like a mini solar panel where every shingle in your house is collecting solar energy. Mm -hmm. um, and you can have a, you have the batteries, the power wall, they call it, uh, the, which is a battery for your entire house. And you can come and plug your car up to it. So the theory is, you know, your house is running off of daylight uh, in the daytime. Uh, it can charge your car up to you. And then at nighttime, all the access energy that you weren't using during the daytime is stored in your power wall. So now at nighttime, your, your house is running off of uh, your power wall, the charge from the day, the access charge from the daytime uh, electricity. So uh, you're at that point almost self, you know, you know self aligned You're self efficient. You don't need to really have power from the grid unless it's a uh, you have a major drain that you need to. Uh, no, yeah, and that's my goal for my future house is definitely yeah. to to get so, get some of that. Especially this Texas sun. Oh, we got plenty of solar energy to convert. So, so who wouldn't want that closed system? I mean, where you could just be self reliant, and that is what I think uh, is what we're going to now. With down at least down here, with some of the providers down here, they don't they're not friendly towards solar, uh, which means that. Uh, they won't let you usually with solar if you use it more than you uh if you use if you use it, uh if you use it less than what your solar uh units producing you know that usually goes back to the grid and uh they call that net metering where uh the amount you put back in the grid the the uh electricity provider will credit you that amount so it'll be actually a plus, uh, a plus credit uh, uh, uh of your total account of how much energy you use uh, well, they don't do that here uh, for a lot of providers. They just money you put uh, energy you put back to the grid. They just say thanks and don't give you any credit for it. So it makes solar down here not as practical at, the, at this particular moment. Um, not until uh, you know some regulation comes around where it forces them to acknowledge well, that I can, credit. I can see that being addressed, especially with democratic control of uh, the federal government. I can see that being pushed through to yeah, make that so, mandatory. Yeah, so if they get, that gets resolved, then you'll see a lot more people in, in you know, different states might have different regulations. But that comes down as a federal issue um, where they require these uh, electric uh, electricity companies to do that. You know, you're going to see uh, the, An explosion. the solar explosion. So, so, and to my knowledge, only Tesla does the solar roofs. A lot of people, a lot of so, companies yeah. do solar panels. And you look at it, I think you got a solar roof up there. Look how slick, you can't, from so far away, you can't even tell it's not regular shingles. Mm -hmm. You know, he has and goals they, to make them as cheap, uh, of course, that's including their effectiveness over time. You know how they love to run those calculations. But just yeah. as durable, just as long lasting. They're as more durable. Virus, you know. Yeah, they've done testing. They're more durable than your traditional shingle. Yeah, it's three uh, times stronger. To, uh, that's their claim right here on the Tesla's. Oh, yeah, so, cool. I mean, you, you just think three about times it. stronger. Every, yeah, everybody having a solar, uh, uh, if enough people get it, you know, you can still have the grid and enough people will supply their, let's say you fill up your batteries and still have excess energy, you can still pump that back into the grid and that helps supplement the energy needs for people who can't uh, afford a, a, a solar or live in apartments maybe, um, or businesses that can't have solar on it, you know, and that's just overall better. And it's actually better for the consumer because now if you can sell your energy back. Uh, you're making a little money off of your grid. 
Prime, which is a plus. And I just saw this Solar Roost, they're coming with a 25 year warranty, so that's definitely you know good enough to give you a commitment. Yeah, you know, most regular rules, I think it's about 30 years, so 25 years is not far off. I mean, that's, uh, you know. And by, the, the, by 25 years, you'd be looking for the upgraded, more efficient solar roofs. So. Exactly. So, and, you know, right now, the biggest barrier to entry on the solar roof is the price. Um, you know, they're, they're getting cheaper as time goes on. Uh, but, you know, that's the biggest barrier to entry. But once the price comes down, like every, all for these EVs and clean energy, the price is coming down significantly off of these products. You know, it's it's, it's gonna uh, it's gonna become more affordable one day. So, you know, you, this is some of the things we gotta look into as investors and look forward to. You keep your eyes on things like that. Try to keep your eyes on trends. Uh, try to predict where the market's gonna move a year from now. You know, two years from now, three, four, five years from now. What companies are gonna continue to grow and be more innovative? And what companies are gonna be kind of left behind and being stagnant? You know, so, like for me personally, I wouldn't be investing in oil right now would be investing in Exxon, <laughs> you know, or BP or anything like that, because I see them uh, becoming the way they don't change their business model uh, coming up. So, you know, but that's just, you know, some of our takes on uh, some other movers in the market. Uh, we'll continue to look at uh, what happens with GameStop and AMC uh, from, you know, the rest of the night through post uh, market hours. Like I said, we're going to have people from Europe and uh Asia investing in and we'll see what they do and we'll see what happens tomorrow and you know we'll we'll you know if necessary we'll come back tomorrow and we'll talk about the significant movement in either direction you know uh like I said don't you know don't panic get get a good nice rest you know don't uh don't stress over this because you can't control the market for all we know it could bounce back heavy tomorrow and everybody'll be happy you know mm -hmm. or you can do the opposite no need to stress about it uh you know just just uh Stay patient, you know, if you if you invested with some kind of conviction, you know, hold on to that conviction and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Um, so here's to another good trading week. Hopefully it's a good one for both the American public and uh, every individual investor out there. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in and watching with us. Uh, we appreciate you guys. As always, we are on Twitter. Uh, real underscore in the black we're on facebook in the black money we're right here on twitter we're on youtube we're all over the place so check us out we have the new video coming for you guys that we'll probably have by the end of the week um we'll probably tease that in a future one but thank you guys and have a good night mm -hmm.